And that must have actually called the disciples pretty quickly because Peter, as the leader, immediately says, Wow, if the Lord's walking on the water, then I want to walk on the water too. Isn't that interesting that that is also our call, isn't it? You know, we see what Jesus does and we want to do what he does. We want to walk on the water too, don't we? Later on in the 6th century, St. Mary of Egypt would also walk on the water. She'd walk across the Jordan River and do just as though Jesus did. So we always want to be looking to Christ to see what his works were, what his life was, and what he did to give us help. So Jesus walks on the water, and what's he instruct? Of course, Peter, as Peter begins to sink, and says, Lord, save me. And he reaches out and grabs it and jumps into the boat and immediately says to them, Oh, you have little faith. Why didn't you trust me? You could have kept going. But what was Peter doing? He was looking at the winds and the, the waves and seeing everything around him, and that's why he got distracted. We also, when we take our eyes off of Christ, we take our eyes off of him and his life and how to live, and we start looking to ourselves, then we're going to fall. We're going to face the storms. We're going to start going down under the water of death. But when we trust Christ, lean on him, look to him in every way, shape, and form, we see his power coming to light. And we see his power within us. Brothers and sisters, this is the call that we can have the life of Christ. We can live as Christ lives. He wants us to act and do the same miracles that he did. Today's uh, lesson from the saints is from St. Bartholomew. When you came in today and you saw the icon of St. Bartholomew, or also known as St. Nathaniel, who was one of the holy disciples. Bartholomew and Nathaniel were, like, uh, uh, Bartholomew was more of a nickname for Nathaniel. Um, but they, uh, a famous disciple who went to Armenia and he was crucified there, just as the Lord was crucified. But I want to read you the story because it's very instructive because it involves water. We commemorate the translation today of St. Bartholomew's relics while his main feast falls on June 11. When this great apostle was crucified in Orbanathonis in Armenia, Christians took his body and buried it in leaden coffins. Okay? A lead coffin. I'm not sure what the meaning with the lead coffin was, but I think it was so that those relics, those holy things, which they considered to be holy, even the bones of uh, an apostle or a saint were considered to be holy. And that is because the incarnation teaches us that when God came down and became a man, that he made all of, he renewed all of creation. This was a transfiguration of all of creation. So now even, even the bones and the things that people touch become holy because they are holy. Holiness can actually be passed on in that way. We see this in the church on Mount Athos. Even the dust of the church, when it is clean, is considered to be holy. Because these holy men of God and the holy incense and all the singing and everything that happens in church brings holiness to the very dirt of the church. So even the dirt of the church for the holy monastics becomes holy. So relics have this way of transposing or transmitting, I should say, the Lord's holiness to it. St. Bartholomew was no different. They put his bones inside of a lead coffin. And after his death, he had been crucified by the pagans. And it says that when numerous miracles have been wrought over the apostles' grave, especially healings of the sick, this led to an increase in the number of Christians. So even though they tried to kill Bartholomew and crucify him, even his relics were salvific. Even his relics were be bringing people to Christ. This is true of us as well, brothers and sisters. I think the things that we leave behind can actually be a witness. Be a witness to others of our faith. And I guess I would ask you that question in your own life. What are you leaving behind to be a witness to Christ in your life. Every day you leave something behind. What do you leave? What have you offered that day? What have you left so when the next day comes to someone remember you from that day, from the good things that you did? 
Bartholomew left dynamic teaching and his power was wrought through Christ even in his relics. So the pagans were so upset that they took this leaden coffin and there were also a number of other coffins there of other believers, other saints. They were, pagans were afraid of this and so they took the coffins and they threw them into the ocean, into the sea. This would have been the Mediterranean Sea. And it says that at the same time they threw four other coffins with the relics of the martyrs. Pythian, Lucian, Gregory, and Achaicus. By God's providence, the coffins did not sink, but they floated, carried by the waves to various places. Achaicus is to the city of Ascalon, Gregory's to Calabria, <coughs> Lucian's to Manessa, Papian's to, to a place in Sicily, and Bartholomew's to the island of Lapiria. By some mysterious revelation, <laughs> even the bishop of Liberia, Agathon, learned of the approach to Liberia of the relics of St. Bartholomew. God revealed to him that the relics were on their way in a floating leaden coffin. Agathon, with his clergy and all of his people, went out to the shore and awaited the coffin with great joy. On that occasion, many of the sick were healed by the Holy Apostles' relics as well. There, then they were placed in the church of St. Bartholomew and lay there until the time of Theophilus the Iconoclast, when then the Muslims threatened the Lapyrites, and the Apostles' relics were taken from the town to the town of Benevenito. Thus God glorified his apostles by miracles both during his lifetime and after his death. So we see, brothers and sisters, how water here played another role, right? God wants to show that he is over all creation. We even say this in our uh, services, don't we? Especially during the time of the possible singing, we say that the Lord, uh, I, I can't remember the exact phrase, but it is uh, what God tends to overthrow the things that are natural and normal. He does things that are not normal and natural to show his power. Brothers and sisters, in your life, you also must walk on the water. You also must traverse over the death and the suffering and the difficulty that you are encountering in your own life. You have to keep your eyes on the Lord. When we do this and we crucify ourselves and live for Him, he transforms us. He allows us to even in a leaden coffin to float on the water and to be brought healing even after our death. Brothers and sisters, we have hope only in Christ. We have hope only in what he offers to us. What we have to do is take what he offers and make it alive in us. Don't make it dormant. Don't make it just an act that you do out of rote but something that you do because you love. Because you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Like St. Bartholomew, like St. Titus today as well. A close companion of St. Paul who loved God deeply. We have to cultivate this love. We cultivate this love because we know Jesus conquered death and he gave us the ability to overcome our own sinfulness. This is what God wants. He wants holiness. He wants us to be righteous. Only the saints' relics who are holy and righteous work miracles. We have to always be keeping that in the forefront of our minds, brothers and sisters. Let us go in peace today and remember the Lord's strength and words that he gives to us for healing, health, and salvation. Do not be afraid. Be of good cheer. I am with you. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ.